You enjoying your meal? Yes. Hey. Good. Karibuni hapa kwetu. Do you know me? All this while where was your dad? No, no, no. I have never met him. I have never met even to death. No. Yeah, when I was born he went missing. That's that's why I was explaining. He was he said I'm not his child. It was terrible, Bomani. Let me tell you, it was terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I thank God he gave us the grace to survive. That brings me to this question. What's happening in, in Jubilee? Is the ship afloat? No, there's no Jubilee. Jubilee is dead. I mean, we have been living in denial for long. It's dead. Akuna. Thank you so much for granting us a sit down with you. How are you? I'm very fine. Mm -hmm. And thank you also for these opportunities to share with Tuko News. Mm -hmm. How are you handling the times? I'm fine, I'm well. I'm uh, taking uh, one day at a time, but very active. Mm -hmm. Very, very active, uh, trying to help the people. Uh, because I have just observed keenly that in moments of uh, crisis, leaders emerge. But in, in moments of elections and political contestations, tricksters, fraudsters, and cornermen emerge. You enjoying your meal? Yes. Hey. Good. Karibuni hapa kwetu. Do you know me? You look like daddy. Wanafanana, by the way. Kama ni mekosea? Na nani? Uyu. Hmm. Ah, uyu ni wako? Uyu ni wama. Lakini kuna bile? Wanga. <laughs> oh, do you want a banana? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Now this is more. Let's then dig right in, and uh, I want my audience to really get to know who Senator Isaac is. Yeah, yeah. So I was born in 1982, so I'm turning 38 very soon. Uh, I think in a few weeks' time, on 29th of May, wow. uh, in Kiambu Hospital. <laughs> That's where I was born, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, my mother. My mother is called Grace Jerry. Uh, and uh, well, it was difficult for her because she got me and I was different. And uh, she had to li raise me alone with my brother. My brother is older. So I grew up uh, in Gidunguri uh, until, right until the age of three and a half years when I was taken to Thika School for the Blind for assessment. And one year later I joined the school because then they didn't know, I mean, this child, uh, how do you raise him up? And uh, because of being born with albinism. And uh, there were a lot of name callings. People were asking, I mean, how do you get this child? My mother was accused of doing all sorts of things or having an affair with a white person. There was a lot of misconceptions. Others confusing it for other types of impairments, yeah? uh, like uh, cerebral palsy. So it was, it, was really, um, it was really a challenging moment for my family. What about your peers? How did they handle you? The, the, the good thing about my home is that they embraced me. So they would say, this is a gift from God. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, and they gave me all the love. They wouldn't allow me to do manual tasks, like digging the shamba. Not that I can't do it. In fact, in Form 4, I was the best in agriculture in my school. <laughs> but uh, I would like, when the others were digging the shamba, I would fetch water from Roiro River, interestingly. Yeah, so Roiro, is, Roiro River is very close to me in the sense that I fetch water from it. So, so, so basically, uh, I mean, I, I would just be like any other kids. Others would come, touch me, thinking like uh, uh, they would get the albinism out of it or just want to know what is happening to this person. So it was difficult, really, but especially when I gained conscience and people calling you names in the streets and things like those. But then I was able to go to a special school and that, in a way, helped me because I found other kids with albinism there. All this while, where was your dad? No, no, no. I have never met him. I have never met even to death. Uh -huh. No. Probably he sort of uh, went missing after. Yeah, when I was born, he went missing. That's that's why I was explaining. He was he said I'm not his child. Uh -huh. mm. Have you tried to find out where he is? I think I've made peace with it. Mm -hmm. No. I tried to think that when I came into the public limelight, he would show up or show interest. 
but no, I, 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 I'm fine. Because even if he was to do so, what, how would I treat him? How would I, I mean, how would I handle it? I'm at peace, I've been ruled by my mother. My mother and my grandmother are my two strongest people. Yeah, because you see now, when my mom, my mom used to work for casual jobs. She used to, you know, like uh, dig the shamba for other people, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and including the, our local MP then, uh, Adam Agogo. So she would leave me uh, under a banana tree, uh, she tells me, and I uh, would crawl to her if I was hungry, or in the, those coffee bushes. So, I mean, it is her that I treasure. And my grandmother, because when now she finally got some kind of a job working at some hardware here in Gidorai called Riflo, she's the one who started that one. It was a, one hardware for a long time in Gidorai. I think at the age of 35, mm -hmm. some three years ago, I, I made peace and said, what is it that I'm lacking? The best thing I can do is to be a good father to my children. Yes. Pink. I have my little son Jiro here. Mm -hmm. I love him to bits and I want him to have a father that I never did. Not, not that I would uh, dismiss them if they showed up, but uh, certainly uh, <laughs> it's not one of my problems. I, I used to, for a long time, mm -hmm. to want to have it and to meet the person and to show in fact, I would parade my mother on TV so that that person can know the woman you left, actually, the son has become something. Uh, but then, ah, not anymore. But there's a need for closure, but <coughs> you've settled with it. You've made peace with it. No, yeah, I, yeah, that's my way of closure. Exactly. If it, ca if it came, it would be opening up again, old wounds and whatever. But personally, I am, I am I'm okay with that. I have comparison with Barack Obama. He talks about his own challenges around how he, he grew up without a father, a father he barely knew. I mean, he only met him, I think, once or twice or something like that. Uh, but then he wants to be the best. Uh, he, he, has, he has tried to be the best for Mali and Sasha because of the fact that, um, he, you know, that's, that's the, that's, that deficit, that de hunger, then tra translates into you being the best for your children. Exactly. Yeah, rather than just looking for somebody who decided to run away. In any case, what is, what is it so good about you coming after you've been raised with, by, by your mother with all the problems? You know, not, you know, school fees issues and all that. That is why for me, out, there is nobody out there who has my child other than Mukami. Akuna, I'm not going to ensure that. Because I know the challenges of being raised up without a, without a father. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So young, young, uh, young Mwaura is in uh, high school, in Thika High School. Yeah, so I went to, to, to primary school for the blind. Uh, it's good I tell you this. <laughs> I'm listening. I did my first school in leadership, in nursery school. I think I had a very strong sense of justice. What happened, we had a, a, lead, a girl called Nelly. So Nelly was a class prefect. Nelly had been selected by the class teacher on account of her body size. But Nelly was a very, was a big bully to us little ones. Because she was the biggest noise maker. She was uh, very, you know, unruly and all of that. But then she had the responsibility of reporting those who are making noise to Teacher Rebecca. How are you, Teacher Rebecca? Wherever you are, uh, and Teacher Betty, I salute you. And Teacher Naomi, those who are my, my, my nursery school teachers, I salute you if you watch. Um, but power was given to the bully in the room. Exactly, because there's this idea that the, the biggest child should be in charge of others. So what I did, I said, no, 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 it cannot be, because now we couldn't report her, because some of us were natural noise makers, we would be reported anyway. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, no, you should first report yourself and then say others. <laughs> said, there is only one way, we must create evidence that this is happening. I put the bean bags and bottle tops and building blocks on top of the table. As usual, she, she came sprawling and they were all over said, eh, then I saw the children, say my memoir, and now they started singing and all of that. Then the teacher found us and we said, there's nothing is going to happen. And the teacher came and said, yes, it's her. In fact, yende anakuwa kikuja kutu report. Na yende anakuwa kituwa kelele. Na katolewa, na hapo, sema, munataka nini? Isaac, and Isaac became the prefect. <laughs> so I have never forgotten that bit. Uh, but you can imagine, you know, sometimes we think, some of these principles we see in life, eh? 
that they happen much later. No, 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 no. Wow. Which song is that? <laughs> Be an overcomer, only cowards here when they fall, they meet on the battle front. We are God's only children on the royal board and must fall. No, no, this So, primary school, I, I was a good student. I was always top three. I was very good in uh, drama. Kiswahili drama, I, 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 and also public uh, poetry. So I recite poetry. I was good with kids in terms of teaching them the Bible. So I was a CU leader, and also um, I only came to be a prefect now. In the whole of my primary school, interestingly, I came to be a prefect uh, at the in class eight. So when I was made a class prefect and also a house prefect, both of them at the same time. I went to Thika High School for the Blind, which is the secondary school of the primary school. Yeah, in high school, again, things repeat themselves because I was made a school dormitory prefect at uh, in Form 1. But I rose to become the student president and also the Christian Union leader. This time around, I did public speaking in English and I was number four nationally in the secondary schools wow. in 1999. So I, I continued doing the same. I also started the environment club a debating club, a writer's club, a journalist club, whatever. Those, I started them in that school. Uh, so I was very, very active. And, uh, and uh, it was very difficult also to me uh, because I had to be the president of the students and also the Christian Union leader. It's like being the head of government and the head of church. Eh? Uh, church and state. Yes, but at the age of 14 is when I made a, de a decision that I will be a politician. Mm -hmm. I had the ambition to be in politics. And true to it, you see much later in life, I've actually uh, become, uh, you know, the best beneficiary of political parties, both Jubilee and Odia. <laughs> <laughs> that I agree. When I was small, I, I mean, I used to be very uh, talkative. And then my, 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 grand, my grandfather would say, Uyu mtoto wetu ni kama atakuwa mwana siyasa. Then my grandmother said, no, 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 atakuwa mwana siyasa. Atakuwa mwana siyasa. By the age of five, six years. So they could actually, my grandfather would tell. In fact, because he died later, my, my grandmother tells me, I wish he was alive to see that whatever he was predicting came to pass. He says, You see, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You've lived his dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you see, that's why, that's why we need to ask this question. Some of these things are actually involved. There are people who are in politics and they are not natural leaders. The people who you are elected into office, uh, the most uh, prominent currently is Gladys Wanga. That time known as Gladys Atieno Nyasuna. So we campaigned together with her. You she actually was... posted a picture of you and her. Yes, yes, yes. Back yes. in the days. Back in the days because uh -huh. that we were serving together. I think it was on a Sunday we were strolling, coming from, well, uh, yeah. I was coming from home. Actually, that bag you see me carrying had some chapatis inside. Because every weekend I would go to the Rai and my mom would give me some chapatis to come and eat. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So Gla Ojasuna and I, or rather Wanga now, uh, got uh, uh, elected in that, that year, I was in first year. For me, I was elected in first year. My budget for campaign that time was 3,000 shillings <laughs> from my help, <laughs> High Education Laws Board. <laughs> and uh, I was elected with a landslide. Mm -hmm. By the time I was 22 years, something very interesting happened. I was appointed by Ochilo Wayako, who is now the Center for Migori, again, who you are with, we are with in the Senate to be a board member of the first National Council for People with Disabilities at the age of 22. Wow. Which was huge because it had not happened. A student, a student being appointed in the board of a government uh, authority, agency. In 2010, I went and did a master's degree in development studies uh, in South Africa at the Conrad Adenauer Stiftung, Nelson Mandela University. In 2011, I was the best in the whole country for the Ford Foundation Scholarship as a whole, I was the number one. Wow. Uh, number two was Rafael Obonio. Number three, I don't know, was Gilbert somebody. I was number one, and then I was given a scholarship. I was supposed to go to Harvard, uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government. But I chose to go to University of Leeds. So I missed going to Harvard by choice. <laughs> by choice, let me tell you. Because I wanted to be in Parliament in 2013. 
Ah. So nowadays I ask myself whether I made the right decision. <laughs> uh, of but course, but I made it. So. <laughs> because I'm still in parliament. But uh, because if, uh, why I chose to go to Leeds and not Harvard, because Harvard would have taken me two years for my master's. But then Leeds I was going to take one year. And I did not want to miss in the game because I knew my time was 2013. I knew if I didn't get to parliament in 2013 because I was, I'm in school somewhere, I can't get my ambition. Yeah. 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 Uh, sir. You are a family man? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. I'm a family man. I'm married to one wife, Mukami. Elias Mukami. Uh, yeah, we have had triplets, but they didn't survive. Only one, Jiro, who is now, he's just turned three. He started school, uh, uh, he's at, uh, he's doing his playgroup. Daddy! Daddy! How did you handle the loss of your two little angels? It was terrible, Bomani. Let me tell you, it was terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I thank God he gave us the grace to survive. I wouldn't wish anybody. Because you see now, when the children were delivered, I was the first to see them, mm -hmm. apart from the medics. They were, in, they were in polythene bags, so that they don't lose the heat. As they were being transferred from uh, the maternity to Niku, I wouldn't touch them. Mm -hmm. And they went there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So when people are celebrating, for me, I was wondering, what are you people celebrating? It was terrible. Then two year, two days later, you know, there were two boys and one girl. Mm -hmm. My daughter died. And you know, in a family setup, you always, you know, joke with each other. Mm -hmm. So I was looking, you know, forward to Njeri because she's named, she was named after my mother. Mm -hmm. So she dies. Then we were in hospital for 76 days. Then Maura died also, Maura Jr. died. So the only surviving one is Njiru. Njiru had his own antiques playing funny, just the same way you're seeing him. Uh -huh. He was always funny, sleeping, in, you know, and yet he was actually the biggest in that place. <laughs> he was the biggest or the smallest, uh -huh. small babies. We were left with a bill of 11.2 million. Okay. Yeah. In the midst of campaigns, you know, I would campaign during the day, but every evening I would go to see my wife in the hospital. It was terrible. Never wish anyone that, even your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. I went through hell. We went through hell. Mm -hmm. But we survived. In fact, when we went around the campaign, it was just a way of also moving away from that pain. Because eh? we were distracted. Mm -hmm. Ah. Anyway, but God is great. Um, this one I was given a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014. This one. It's a model, this is a medal I got last year because of being a team leader for the leading young. Ah. Yeah, for young parliamentarians. Uh -huh. The program we are doing with John Maxwell. This one I was given in 2015 for being the best representative. I was, we were competing with Sakaja ah. and I defeated him. Um, uh, I was given the best representative for Wanjiko special interests. <laughs> What does, what does the number 00, 0 12, 15 mean to you? It means it is my life member, number of Orange Democratic Movement. <laughs> and I don't know how you become a life member of a party and then you, you, you leave the party before the party <laughs> dies. <laughs> so I also want to know the life member number of Raila Odinga uh -huh. in Kanu uh -huh. and William Ruto in ODM. How did you rise to become uh, Raila Odinga's advisor, senior advisor, actually? Because I was uh, believing in his, what he calls theoretically the left. I believed in his ideologies. Theoretically? So I rose through the parties. <laughs> but I was introduced to Raila by Peter Nyang Nyongo. Mm -hmm. Peter Nyang Nyongo is my political professor. He's my, I say I went to Raila School of Politics. Uh, but I, I, my political professor was Anyang Nyongo. So he's a, Anyang Nyongo is actually the one who, there's always this mis misconception. 
Anyang Nyongo is the one who introduced me to, to national politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's even the one who opened this house. Wow. Now, uh, I, I was very active and then I was discovered by some NGO. Uh, then they recommended me to uh, Lupita Nyongo. You know Lupita Nyongo? The daughter. The daughter. Yeah. She was at Hamhurst College and she wanted to do a film on albinism. So we met at Ken, Kenya National Theatre and we, we acted with Lupita. I was acting as an aspiring politician. Then Lupita is the one who introduced me to Anyang Nyongo because I, have always, I had always admired Anyang Nyongo. In fact, I had a whole a huge photo of, of, of newspaper cutting of, of him in my cubicle. So, so, so that is how I started my journey. Wow. Yes. How is it that then you're surviving in Jubilee now and yet you're a life member of ODM? Because ODM and other political parties, including Jubilee, are not political parties. They are not, they are not, in, ODM sometimes tries, I must give credit where it is due, because it has survived uh, three elections. Yeah. Political parties and their successors are nothing more than rudimentary uh, ethnic alliances. And that's the pain of it. And they do not live up to the ideals of what they believe in. I mean, Omani, you only have two ears, two eyes, one, uh, two, uh, a nose with two, 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 no, two nostrils or two, two holes there, and a mouth. And you can't do much without people. And the only way you can have people who think like you is through a political party system. After 10 years stay in ODM, you, you, you exit. Yes. What probably brought the fallout? between you and uh, uh, Ryan? I realized it was fake. Uh -huh. It was a mirage, it was a lie. And I was uh, living a lie. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, people think that we are enemies. We are not. You should be shocked to know In fact, people should understand. It's not personal. We may differ politically, but it's not personal. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, right now, if I was to run for Kiambu, would I run with ODM? I don't think so. So I'm, I'm more useful in politics when I'm in parliament than when I'm outside. That brings me to this question. What's happening in, in Jubilee? Is the ship afloat? No, there's no Jubilee. Jubilee is dead. I mean, we have been living in denial for long. It's dead. Akuna. Jubilee died the moment Raila shook hands. You know now Corona says we should not shake hands. Eh? <laughs> so if the same handshake brought peace, the same handshake has brought Corona. Let me tell you. To be told to choose between uh, Momani, between Uhuru and Ruto, is extremely difficult. Because how? It's like being told to choose between your mother and father. You are seeing a miss too. <laughs> exactly. We are hearing the drum beats of a unity government that is between uh, Raila Odinga and uh, uh, Uhuru. Uhuru yeah. That was what do you make of it? Uh, <laughs> Four years ago, mm -hmm. when I went to meet Raila and tell him that I'm moving to Jubilee, um, we had a conversation with him. And uh, he told me to ask Uhuru to be his running mate for one term. And then uh, Uhuru can come back and continue being president because the constitution talks about two consecutive terms. Mm -hmm. Then I asked him what about Ruto. So it's like asking for a pound of flesh. And we left the discussion about that when he said he wants, he can be as well Prime Minister. There's this talk in town that uh, the so-called dynasties have a ploy probably to, to scuttle uh, the Deputy President's hopes probably of rising to the top seat. What do you make of them? No, they are doing so. I mean, are you asking, Mamani? That, that is a big battle we are going to witness. Is he undermined in Jubilee? He's isolated. Not undermined. He's isolated. When you are isolated, what does that mean? It's beyond undermining. Uh -huh. You see, I can undermine you, but we are still playing together. But isolation, what do you have? Have you seen him in this COVID-19? Can you look at the body language from individuals who used to wear shirts and ties uh -huh. and uh, to now? So, Rai Laudinga has always wanted to do a media dev Putin uh, scenario, Putin media dev scenario in Russia. Mm -hmm. Because I told him I can see Uhuru is going to win the elections. Immediately Uhuru wins the elections or becomes president, they would start disparaging uh, uh, William Ruto. Mm -hmm. And I told William Ruto about it, and Ruto laughed about it. Uh -huh. So, But the times are nigh. This, this, this is all choreographed, and it was planned even before the last election. People are long-term planners. When you say, when you say that uh, Raila asked you to, to talk to Uhuru to be his running mate, mm. who, in what capacity did he... Probably. No, but that I, was, I had 
Uhuru had already approached me to join Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So we were close. I mean, it was, I mean, remember, even my wedding, Uhuru was the one who... So he was sending me as an emissary. Uh -huh. And I told Uhuru, I did. Uh -huh. uh, so that this... Was, what was his response? That time, of course, the, 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 the... What do you call it? The political atmosphere was very different from now. But whatever I predicted has come to pass. Because about th three years later, I had I started hearing the same talk on the streets. We are in a society that is, uh, I call it upside down, in that uh, virtue is what is, or rather vice is what has become virtue. No one is uh, truly probably fighting for the real cause of humanity. What do you think could be uh, the best solution to probably having our leaders embrace the country as their own and try to develop it in the long run? Just to, to give, uh, to support your st statement, Mamani, Yes, virtue has become vice and vice has become virtue, but we can't give up. Because you see, even the good that we enjoy is a result of those who uh, 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 change, uh, make changes. In fact, Africa is not going to be changed by elections, but by people who will make a thousand changes in those small little places that they may never even be discovered or even celebrated. And all of a sudden, in a moment of ubiquitous transformation, those parks will join to form a big bonfire. That is when Africa will change. This country must be led by individuals who uh, believe in Jesus Christ. Personally, that's what I believe in. God is the one who decides. And for me, if God tells me, today don't be in parliament, Lord, I hear you. That I can assure you. I am a strong believer. I'm a born again Christian. I am a very active member of the Bunge Fellowship. And for me, I'm guided by that. I am a great sinner. Because sometimes when you say you are a, you are a, you are a born again, people think you are uh, holier than thou. No. Because in the book of Romans 5, it says, where grace abounds, so, is, so does sin. So there is so much grace where there is sin. So you, we have principles and we believe that we can change this country. But can Kenyans give us that opportunity? Your head wrap, or rather your cap. Headgear. Headgear is a, is a signature. Yes, it's on my left-wing politics. Uh -huh. I'm a left-leaning politician, and that is why I wear this hat. Uh -huh. It is informed by, uh, you know, Eastern left-leaning uh, politics. Uh -huh. So I'm left or center, though. I'm not far left. Uh -huh. Because I also believe in the, in the power of the market. In fact, uh, left-leaning, but then we have now created something called the third way. The third, that's where you hear the third way alliance, huh? which be gets the best of the left and the best of the right. Where do you get it from? Um, I've had locally made one, but these ones nowadays, um, I get them from uh, Indonesia. Uh -huh. Yes, others in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh -huh. But these recent ones are from Hong Kong. Wow. I've seen your fellow parliamentarian Didmas mm. with a similar one, but it's red. Yeah, he just copied me. And then he <laughs> made it red. In fact, we were in, a, in we, we were in an interview. Is it on Citizen or K24? One of them. Okay. That's how he picked it up. The next week, I saw him because he was asking me where I got I get these ones from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's, so he picked it from me. He stole your style. It's good when you see people copying you. It means they admire you. <laughs> <laughs> I have two more, two more, two more questions to go. But this one, the first one is a, a, five, a set of five questions, mm -hmm. which I'll give you names of uh, leaders or influential persons, mm -hmm. and you choose between one of the two. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. And it's only five. Okay. So here we go. Raila Odinga or D.P. Ruto? Pass. <laughs> Mike Sonko or Ferdinand Waititu? Pass. Malcolm X or Babu Owino? Malcolm X. Nelson Mandela or Barack Obama? Wow, what kind of question is that? Both. I can't choose both. <laughs> uh, it's a difficult one, but I think... Uh, let me go with Mandela. <laughs> Although I, I really agree with Obama. <laughs> yeah. This one is uh, entertainment based. Mm. King Kaka or John DeMethio? Uh, surely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, John DeMethio, I worked with him in campaign. <laughs> For three months we were with him almost every day. King Kaka, I like his stand because of uh, the way he is very anti-evil things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So for purposes of expediency, I will go to, for King Kaka. King Kaka. Uh, so I cannot choose between Ruto and Raila. That one you are <laughs> setting me up. I will not give you that answer. I cannot choose between Waititu and Sonko. I think they are two horrible leaders. Finally, 
What's there in store for us, for you, from you that is in 2022? The jury is still at large there. I'm currently serving the people. They still out of time. Certainly there are strong indications that I should run for Senator Kiambu. Uh -huh. The ratings recently have shown that I'm the favorite. Wow. Uh, I have the people of Ruiru to serve also. I run for MP there. Time will tell. Your final remarks. Kenyans don't give up, don't lose hope. We, will, we are together in this, work hard, make something out of yourself, don't lose uh, focus of a better country. If you want to change the world, if you want to change Kenya, you just need to have the best intentions and you have a good team that you can work together to make the right moves and the right choices. Exactly. Thank you so much. We only take an elbow during this time. Yes. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Thank you so much. Karibu. Okay. Yeah. So this is, where, this is what I do. When I am stressed, huh? I just that's come here. That's when you are not at the fountain. Yes, when I'm not at the fountain, uh -huh. I just come here and, and play songs uh, calmly. Like this, we're not very loud. Like uh -huh.